Hello, my friends, Arya here. I hope you're all having a wonderful April so far and Ramadan Mubarak to any of you out there currently celebrating Ramadan. And now, let's do something we probably shouldn't. So, so far this year, we've already looked into a few pieces of pop culture with a darker history associated with them. For example, I decided to start my year off by listening to the supposedly cursed Hungarian suicide song. And then I followed that up by watching the once banned BBC film, Ghost Watch. So clearly I've proven that I either have no regard for my own well-being or I'm willing to do anything to keep you all entertained. Hmm. Now the subject of today's video comes from one of you who clearly has a death wish for me and suggested in the Share Spooky Things channel of our Discord server that I look into the supposedly cursed Japanese poem known as Tamino's Hell, which is allegedly linked with numerous deaths and other misfortunes which befell those who dared to read the poem out loud. And then I'll read the poem out loud. Now, something that our wonderful research team at BuzzFeed wanted me to really stress to you all is that unlike Gloomy Sunday, the Hungarian suicide song, or Ghost Watch, the banned BBC film, Tamino's Hell, and specifically the alleged deaths and misfortunes surrounding it, are based purely on urban legends. I think that's all they wanted me to say. Thank you, research team. Now, before I read this poem aloud, let's learn a little bit more about its history. According to one source, Tamino's Hell is a poem that was published in 1919 by Seijo Yaso in Yaso's collection of poems, Saken, or Gold Dust, in English. Not too much is known of Yaso other than he was a university professor and lived in France for a time while studying at the Sorbonne. His work was mainly for children, though even his later works contained many unsettling images and concepts such as those in Tamino's Hell. Tamino's Hell recounts the journey of a character named Tamino through a symbolic hell and includes plenty of disturbing and creepy imagery. There are various urban legends about deaths that supposedly surround the poem which has given it cult popularity. And while there is no exact date as to how or when the urban legend came to be, some legends include the death of a filmmaker, whom some sources name as Terayama Shuji, who directed a movie called Denen Nishisu in 1974 which was reportedly based loosely on the poem. There is another rumor of a college student dying after reading the poem out loud, while there are other iterations of the legend that state whoever reads the poem out loud may not die, but could suffer terribly bad luck or sickness after they read it. These instances include stories of those who have suffered falls, permanent voice loss, car accidents, and sudden illnesses. Another story involves a young schoolboy, Taro, who once held a battered copy of the Tamino's Hell poem, as other boys in his class jeered him on, calling him chicken, unless he dared to read the poem out loud. The oldest boy in the class shouted, do it, to Taro, who finally read the poem aloud with a shaky voice. As Taro seemingly did not die, his classmates laughed at their belief of the cursed poem. However, on his walk home from school, Taro looked up to see a huge truck hurtling down the road, the driver falling asleep at the wheel. The legend says that Taro was struck dead by the truck, taking him away to meet Tamino on their journey to hell. Another legend of the poem claims that Yasuo was not the actual author of the poem, and that it was actually written by a young girl or boy named Tamino. After supposedly writing this disturbing poem, Tamino was punished by being locked up in the cellar without any food until their death due to bronchitis onset by the cold and humidity of the cellar. The legend says that Tamino's angry spirit was therefore imprinted in the words of the poem, evoked if someone were to read the poem aloud. Now let's read the poem out loud. Just to let you guys into some of the BuzzFeed secrets, typically when we do a try video, as they would call this, you know, you're supposed to give your pre-thoughts ahead of time, like are you feeling nervous, are you feeling scared beforehand, what are you worried about, and all that kind of, you know, that boring shit. Uh, <laughs> I hope they let me put that in the video. But uh, but the truth is, yeah, so what, what, how am I feeling? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to Jess, my manager, for being an animal. <laughs> But truthfully, how am I feeling before this? Am I nervous? Let's put it this way. Am I a Bugara? Do I believe in spirits, ghosts, all that fun stuff? Or am I more of a Shaniac? You know, am I more of a skeptic? Uh, me, I'm, well, some of you would claim that I'm a criminal, but that's neither here nor there. Now, honestly, I'm in the middle because I do believe in spirits in the spiritual realm of life other than us. However, I also haven't seen any evidence 
of that existence. I've had no supernatural experiences myself, so in many ways, I guess I'm a supernatural agnostic. I mean, I do believe in spirits. I am spiritual. I am Buddhist, after all. I was even previously a novice Buddhist monk, as I once overshared in a ruining history video. I was actually a, a monk. Yeah. Is this real? This yeah. is a real story. It, it was like two weeks. Out, but. but when you're there, you can stroke it, but nothing, nothing. You can't You can't fi You can't finish. So you just were walking around with blue balls the whole day. That seems worse than actually stopping altogether. The fact that I am a spiritual person and I believe in spirits means that I do acknowledge that there is a chance that this urban legend could be rooted in some sort of truth. But am I scared of the dark superstitions surrounding this urban legend? Am I worried that something terrible will happen to me? Eh, not really. I mean, am I a little hesitant? Yeah. I was hesitant before listening to the cursed Hungarian suicide song as well. But if this is how I'm gonna go, then you know, at least it'll make for an interesting headline. And honestly, even if nothing happens to me, that's not to say that the curse isn't real. I mean, I may just be lucking out today. Or maybe the fact that I'm reading an English translation of the poem may disrupt any sort of curse associated with it. So. Who knows? Just check in a week from now, and if I'm posting things on Instagram, then I'm probably okay. In all seriousness though, let's begin. I don't know if you guys heard that, but I didn't like that. I did not like that. But that's nothing, fuck it. <laughs> like that's not, that was not planned, but I don't like that. There's probably something inside the case. Okay, let's do this. Elder sister vomits blood. Younger sister is breathing fire, while sweet little Tamino just spits up the jewels. All alone does Tamino go, falling into that hell, a hell of utter darkness without even flowers. Is Tamino's big sister the one who whips him? The purpose of the scourging hangs dark in his mind. Lashing and thrashing him, ah, but never quite shattering. One sure path to Avicii, the eternal hell. Into that blackest of hells guide him now, I pray to the golden sheep, to the nightingale. How much did he put in that leather pouch to prepare for his trek to the eternal hell? Spring is coming to the valley, to the wood, to the spiraling chasms of the blackest hell. The nightingale in her cage, the sheep aboard the wagon, and tears well up in the eyes of sweet little Tamino. Sing, O oh nightingale, in the vast misty forest. He screams he only misses his little sister. His wailing desperation echoes throughout hell. A fox peony opens its golden petals. Down past the seven mountains and seven rivers of hell, the solitary journey of sweet little Tamino. If in this hell they be found, may they then come to me, please, those sharp spikes of punishment from Needle Mountain. Not just on some empty whim is flesh pierced with blood red pins. They serve as hellish signposts for sweet little Tamino. Oof. Honestly, I got some chills reading that. It's a beautifully written poem. I know it's just the English translation, but as a poem, and I'm no expert, obviously, but as a poem, I think it's it's very well written. Uh, it's very evocative. A lot of imagery in it that definitely sprang to the forefront of my mind as I was reading it out loud. I mean, it is what it's advertised as. It's an unsettling poem, especially if you pair it with the urban legends surrounding it, it's spooky. What might be helpful to give some context to the poem is to look into the collective analyses of Tamino's hell. So based on our research, most interpret the poem and its symbolism of hell as a metaphor for war, likely stemming from the ending of World War I, a year prior to the poem's publication. The second stanza specifically informs the reader that the character is heading to hell. The fourth stanza of the poem refers to hell as a vici, which is the lowest level of the realm of hell in Buddhism, where the worst of the worst people end up. There are four or five major sins a person can commit to end up in a vici. One, creating a rift in the Buddhist monk community. Two, shedding the blood of a Buddha. Three, killing an enlightened person or four, intentionally killing one's mother or father. Some interpretations believe Tamino may have committed that last one, killing their own mother or father. These interpretations also imply that Tamino's descent to hell isn't really that. Tamino might not even be dead or dying. Rather, this going to hell more metaphorically symbolizes an internal struggle with grief and or guilt. The 7th through 10th stanzas conjure up more fantastical imagery describing the descent to hell as desperate, confusing, and full of suffering. All in all, analyses of this poem largely allude to, in the words of Emma Baldwin of Poem Analysis, Tamino's larger destiny to become lost forever. As a Buddhist myself, I find it fascinating to learn a little bit more about this supposed hell that exists 
uh, for these terrible individuals, as I'm actually not too familiar with it. And I actually really find fascinating this alternate interpretation that Tamino isn't actually going to a hell, but is going through, you know, a metaphorical hell after killing their mother or father. All in all, though, I found this to be a very informative and, you know, enlightening experience, and I hope you all did too. And if any of you out there decide to give Tamino's hell a read aloud yourself, let me know what happens. I'd love to love to hear. I'd hope to hear from you, uh, unless something bad happened. And if that is the case, remember, you can't sue me because you're doing it of your own free will. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe. I love that I just told you all to stay safe after actively encouraging you all to read aloud a supposedly cursed poem. That's life. <laughs>